Praise the Lord. I want to take another opportunity to welcome you in our today's uh, wonderful and a unique service. My name's uh, Reverend Dr. Patrick Motegi Rindiri. I serve in Gospel Celebration Church, Chuka. And uh, I want to thank God for this moment. And this very critical time which is not only in our nation, but also in the entire world. Uh, people are confused of what is happening, but I thank God because the wise will take the opportunity and positively of what is happening to come up with a good thing. Joseph said to his brothers and his parents, when they met him in Egypt, when they had gone there because of anger. Maybe you thought evil and planned evil about me, but God changed the evil to the good. Therefore, I am sure those that are positive and those that are wise and those that know their time, they will take the opportunity of this time to come up with good things. And therefore, I want to welcome you today as we share into a very unique uh, service and topic which will touch almost everyone, wherever you are. Let us pray. Our dear and everlasting Father, we thank you for giving us another opportunity, dear Father on Jesus Christ, to listen and to share your word. I commit my listeners and my viewers all over this nation and wherever they are watching or listening uh, to me, dear Father, I declare them blessed and I pray that Lord you shall give them um, wonderful time, dear Master Jehovah God, my Father, to listen and as you talk to them so that they may be able uh, to take this moment to improve their lives as Christians and as families. We worship and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Unastahili kuabudiwa, unastahili e, unastahili kuabudiwa, unastahili e, unastahili e, unastahili kuabudiwa. Unastahili Yesu, unastahili kuabundiwa, unastahili Mwana wa Mabwana, unastahili kuabundiwa, unastahili Yesu, unastahili kuabundiwa, unastahili Unastahili wastahili Unastahili kuabundiwa Unastahili Yesu Unastahili kuabundiwa Unastahili he Amen amen tupigie bwana makofi Unastahili kuabundiwa we are going to get uh, our readings. We have three readings. Psalms 128, verse 1 to 6. How joyful are those who fear the Lord, or who borrow his ways. You will enjoy the fruit of your labor. How joyful and prosperous you will be. Your wife will be like a fruit in the dry vine. Flourishing within your home. Your children will be like vigorous young olive trees, 
as you sit around your table. That is the Lord's blessing for those who fear Him. May the Lord continue to bless you for Zion. May you see Jerusalem prosper as long as you live. May you live to enjoy your grandchildren. May Israel have peace. Acts chapter 2, verse 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of the bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and everything in common. They sought property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they, meet, they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with love and sincere hearts. Praising God and the Jews in favor of God. And the Lord added to their number daily those who are being saved. Amen. Amen. I'll read the other reading from St. Luke chapter 19, verses 1 to 10. The Bible says, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there, the, the name, uh, the name of the man was there by the name Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He went to see who Jesus was, but being a short man, he could not because of the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed in a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, look, Lord. Here and now, I give half of my possession to the poor. And if I have cheated anyone out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and to save what is lost. Amen. Let's hear uh, a prayer for the word by Pastor Saverio as we share the word this wonderful moment. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because of your faithfulness. Thank you because your word is true. It is established forever on God. I pray as your servant shares the same on God, insight and revelation to the glory and honor of your name. May the listeners and the viewers be blessed with the word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I want to share with us how to build and run an effective family altar for generational family power and positive influence. I'll repeat again. How to build and run an effective family altar for generational family power and positive influence. Now, um, this is because at this time, there is a lockdown all over the world of any gathering of churches and any religious group. But it's going to learn that there is something else. People should not complain. People should not be discouraged simply because there is a lockdown. Let me tell you, it is important to know that uh, or to take the opportunity that now we are now dispatched to our cocoons, 
to our homes, to our houses, into what we call into family units. I am taking this positively. Now, when we used to gather in the church, we had only one preacher. But now we have several preachers everywhere from a congregation. The leader of a family unit. Uh, and therefore, the failures family leaders, uh, I want to speak to you so that from today, if you have not been learning a family altar, uh, that which is important now at this time, please, I want you to listen to me well. Now, before I go to the details, I want us to remind ourselves in what the Bible says in Proverbs uh, 14, that, uh, that four, that sin, you know, is a reproach to any nation. But righteousness, when righteousness is seen in a nation, it exalts that nation. When righteousness is found in that nation, the nation is exalted. But sin brings reproach to any people. Now, there are three important institutions in a nation. And one of them is what we, what we call the government. The government is composed of executive, legislature, and judiciary. Let's hear what Romans 13 uh, from verses 1 to 6 says concerning the government as an important in, in, institution uh, in a nation. Everyone must submit himself to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, he who rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers who hold no terror, for those who do right, but for those who do wrong, do you, do you want to be free from fear of one in authority? Then do what is right, and he will commend you. For he is God's servant to do you good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword for nothing. He is God's servant and an angel of wrath to bring punishment on the wrongdoers. Therefore, it is necessary to submit to the authorities, not only because of possible punishment, but also because of conscience. This is also why to pay taxes for the authorities are gone servants who give their full time to governing. Yes, that is an institution that is very important in the nation. The second institution is the church. When Jesus Christ was preaching uh, the greatest sermon on the mount, he was talking to the believers, to the church. And then he told them that you are the light and the salt of the heart. Let's, let's hear a portion of this from Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 to 16. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it remain salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. You are the life of the world, a city on a hill, cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a pole. Instead, they put it on its lamp, on its stand, and gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men, they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Yes, that is the second greatest or important institution in a nation, the church. And therefore, church, I want you to know Wherever you are, I do not know what you are when people see you, when others see you. Are you a light, are you salt, or what are you? Because that is your position. 
That is what Jesus Christ expects of you. Government, whosoever, wherever you are, whether you are in executive, whether you are in, uh, in the legislature, or whether you are in judiciary, you know you are there because God has put you there. I do not know whether you know you are supposed to serve God in that. The third one is the family, uh, the family unit. The family unit. Now, this is a unique institution among the three because it is the only one that is man manufactures human resource. The most important resource for any institution is human resource. If, uh, human resource in any organization, in any institution, is the most important resource. And there is nowhere else where we can manufacture it. It is from a unit, the family unit, which is, in fact, among the three, is the most forgotten. Nobody talks about the family. Nobody, nobody cares about the family. And you will always see. That's why sometimes, sometimes we complain. That pastor is this way. That pastor is that way. That, that governor is that way. That MP is this way. Who manufactured those people? They were manufactured by some parents somewhere in a family unit. So instead of blaming them, we should blame the, uh, uh, you know, the, the source. The source is the family unit. We are saying people are corrupt, but we have been taught corruption from the family unit. We have nobody, uh, nobody has guided us. We are doing what we want because the family unit has failed. And this is why I want to speak about building an altar which will be able to help a family. And uh, as, as we continue, I want us to look to some, uh, script, to some uh, scriptures in the Bible which uh, tell us about uh, the, 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 Bible, the biblical authors. Let's go to uh, Genesis chapter 8, verses 20 to 22. We are going to see Noah. Now, the Bible says uh, this is the first registration. This is the first place where it was recorded, it was registered in the scripture about building an altar. Remember when Noah came out of the ark and now he and his, his family and the animals, when he saw this, whatever happened, he built an altar and sacrificed. He was the first man recorded in the Bible to build an altar. Now the second one, I would like us to see about is Job. And let's, let's, let's hear uh, that reading now uh, from Job chapter 1, verses 1 to 5. The Lord of hosts there lived a man whose name was Job. This man was blameless and upright. He feared God and shunned evil. He had seven sons and three daughters, and he owned 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 uh, year of oxen and 500 donkeys and had a large number of servants. He was the greatest man among all the people of the East. His sons used to take turns holding feast in their homes and they would invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. When a period of feasting and ran its course, Job would send and have them purified. Early in the morning, he would sacrifice a bad offering for each of them, thinking, perhaps my children have sinned and cast God in their heart. This was Job's regular custom. Thank you. Job was a very busy businessman. He was very busy. If you have listened, if you have heard about you know, what is spoken about him in the scripture, what possession he had, he must have been a very busy man. But out of his serious business, what I admire about Job is Job had quality time for his family altar. He had quality time for his family altar. He used to call his children together and have sacrifices. In fact, he sacrificed for each one of the ten children per day. Each one. A day, one child. 
and gave us sacrifice. And therefore, he and quality time. And that's why, you remember when the devil and God and joined the, uh, the, the sons of God. They had gone before God and the devil was there. Then he was asked by God, where have you come from, Satan? And then he said, I have come from down and up. Then he was asked, did you see my son, Job, whom I admire, whom I love? And then the devil said, no, that man does not love you. You have just surrounded. You have surrounded him. You have protected him. What does that mean? When you shall be a man of a family altar, you take it serious. God will protect your family. You will protect your wife. You will protect your children. You will protect your property. Praise the name of the Lord. The other, the other, the other uh, uh, biblical altar that we see in the Bible was Abraham's uh, altar. Let's, let's uh, hear Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Just verse 7. Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied, The fire and the wood are here. Isaac said, But where is the lamb? For the burnt offering. Now, you may wonder why I have picked this scripture. And now, this scripture shows that Abraham, Abraham's custom was to erect an altar and worship on it wherever he went. He always involved his family in the family altar worship. That's why here, uh, we see Isaac was conversant in whatever was happening in their family altar worship. That's why he is asking the father. Here is the uh, here we have the fire, we have the firewood, we have the knife, we have this, but there is something that is missing. That means he was conversant, meaning that this man and a serious family altar. In fact, the influence of worship at the altar in Abraham's family was so strong and trenched that uh, long after his death, we see his sons and grandsons continue with the practice. That means he has taken it seriously. Now, what is the meaning of a family altar? Now, see, in simple terms, when we talk about the family altar, it's a place, listen to this well, it's a place where the family deliberately and intentionally, you must be deliberate and be intentional, meet with God in regular Basis for one worship, two word, three prayer. Then deliberately, they should be deliberate and intentional. Have a regular time. That's what we call family order to worship, to hear the word of God, or to share the word of God, and to pray. Now, let me say this. Your life is as strong as the altar you have been able to sustain. I repeat it again. Your life is as strong as the altar you are able to sustain. Now, a family altar greatly influences our lives because we link with the maker to draw spiritual energy. That's why we draw spiritual energy for us whether you are mother whether you are father whether you are son whether you are daughter that's where we link with our spiritual energy now developing a family altar is a matter that should be given the highest priority in every family whether you are a christian or you are not a christian if you have a family you must have you should have an altar for that family. 
That's why in Joshua chapter 24, verses 15, we hear Joshua. Joshua gives us a, you know, Joshua gives every end of a family the best example in making a choice about family spirituality. He said, you choose, but me, I have already chosen. If you do not choose, me and my family, we will serve the Lord. And therefore, it is good to know, especially at this time, when there is curfew, not only in Kenya, but in other nations because of the corona. Now, there is a lot of confusion. There is a lot of battle in the families because everybody is now at home very young. There are some fathers who have not been used to this. Those who have been seen maybe after one month, now you are there. You are used to be going to the you no know, to, 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 to go to for work or, or for business. And then you have no time for your family. Now all of us are there. We hear there are some of us who are now fighting their wives, others are fighting their husbands, others are fighting their parents because you are not used to sitting together. But I want to uh, you know uh, I, I want to pray that you may take this time positively. Do not go to what we call, uh, um, you know, gender violence. No, please take this time well. And therefore, uh, if you do that, you'll have good time. Now, things to choose to prepare uh, a family altar. One, a specific place. It can either be sitting room in your house. It can either be dining room in your house or kitchen or a separate room if you have in whatever room you are please make sure that you have chosen a place a specific place number two choose time time is when and how long must take into account this thing the needs of the family and the age of children because there are some children that cannot concentrate for long there are others who can and therefore, make sure that you put into account the needs of the family and also the age of the children. Now, the best time, it is around from around 8 uh, to 9 p.m. in the evening for a family altar. But it can range from 30 minutes to one and a half hours. Now, 30 minutes when children are pretty young. One hour may be the normal time for a uh, for a family altar. One and a half hours can be the longest when children are young adults. The third thing to choose is tools to use. The best tools are one, the Bible, two, a song book. You can be either English, Kiswahili, or your mother tongue. Another one is what we call dairy guide or dairy bread. These are books with guided, uh, with guided readings. They give you guidance. They can teach you uh, on how to read the Bible if at all you have a problem. Now let's now, I want to go to the format of a family altar or a family, you know, which can be a, either a service or a fellowship. One, sing a song. Two, short opening prayer number three presentations they can either be temple verses testimonies songs bible <coughs> quizzes or a poem it's good for for us to become a blessing to one another uh, by sharing the presentations this is uh, where we minister to god and to one another number four Read a Bible portion. Number five, that Bible portion can be either be discussed by the entire family or one of the people can do what we call exposition, explaining uh, about the, the portion. Number six, you share prayer needs. You want to know what you're going to pray for, then then, after that, benediction, and 
to get back. Now, something very important is going to apply uh, to make sure that you provide the leadership. Leadership is very important uh, in a family altar. Now, as I finish, um, I want to, to encourage you to start a family altar in your family, please. But there is a warning I want to give you. Because of the foundations where we have come from, do not build an altar on top of another. In your, it, it, it is why you wonder why we have some pastors who are diviners. We have some church leaders who are diviners. They go to church and yet they visit diviners and all witchcraft, uh, witch doctors. They involve witch, witchcraft. And therefore, it is good to know. It is good to know that you cannot build an altar on top of another. That's why Gideon was told by God, you have to bring down your father's altar. He did it after building an altar for himself. So it's good to learn to build an altar for yourself and not on top of another altar. Traditions should not be mixed with the scripture. Please, we should take caution. Now, as I end, before uh, I pray, uh, I want to introduce to you a book that is written by my bishop. It's called Family Altars, Building Effective Family Altars. If you need one, uh, you can call my bishop. He, you can connect with him uh, through his phone. As zero seven two two zero seven two two six four eight triple five. Let us pray. Our dear and everlasting Father, we exalt your name, we glorify your name, dear Lord. May you help every family to take this opportunity, dear Lord, to build up, to start up a family altar where they will involve you, Lord. And my Father, I know out of this there will be revival in the entire nation of Kenya and in the entire Wow, I declare every family blessed and protected for your own glory. I pray that Jehovah God, held shall be a portion to every family. I declare no death in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. To be here, Bona Makofi. Ninge wai, ninge waomba sasa. You prepare sandaka, maripote, mulipo. Mpeane sandaka kwa makanisa yenu, bahari, munaenda, wale wanaokuja, jisi si chuka, tafadhali, uh, mtume, munanjua connection, ata connection mutaziona apa kwa mitandao, mutume maali pale, na wale ambao wangetaka kunibariki kwa maana nimekuwa mbaraka kwako, tafadhali si, si sandaka ya kanisani kwenu ama uh, tithe ya kanisani kwenu. Itakuwa ya prophet ona ukitaka Baba katika nchina la Yesu Kristo, kwa kushukuru kwa sababu ya kuwa pamoja nasi katika ibanda hii. Jehovah God tuwa omba kwa sababu ya wema na utukufu wako. Angalia wapendwa wako wamekutolea kwa njia ya anjabu. Hawa wako hapa na wengine katika manyumba yao, na wengine katika mahali waliko, wengine wanatuma ili waweze kupenda. Uh, kupata connection na wewe kwa maana 
atupeani sandaka kwa sababu tunalipa mchungaji atupeani sandaka kwa sababu tunalipa mbeos tunapeana sandaka na fungu na kulipa fungu zetu za kumi kwa maana tunataka kuconnect na Mungu wetu ambaye anatupea Daundi akas akauliza ni nani mimi na watu wangu ya kwamba tunakupea kwa maana hata kile tunachokupea sasa ni kimetoka kwako baba tunakuomba unyoshe mikono uweze kupokea sandaka kwa furaha baba iwe kama manukato mbele zako wema wako na utukufu ukanjidhirishe twakushukuru twakuinua katika jina la Yesu Kristo tunaomba na kuamini amen, amen. Sasa nataka kuwa kuwa aga I want to uh, leave you with a blessing and declare a blessing upon each one of you each one of your families whatever you are going through the Lord is aware and the Lord when you honor your family altar the Lord will visit you in a mighty way in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit amen and now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. I hope you have enjoyed this teaching. It will be yours if you put it into practice as James chapter 1 verses 22 to 25 says. Do not marry, listen to the word, and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like a man who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he, he looks like. But the man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues to do it and not forgetting what he has heard, but do, doing it, he will be blessed in all he does. This is just part one. We will be doing part two of it next Sunday, the same time. God bless you.